Part three of making a collaborative drawing canvas thing in the browser with P5.js, Node, and Sockets. So where we last left off was we had a Node server working with, oops, not this code. We had a Node server using Express to host a directory, and in that directory was a P5.js sketch. The thing that I need to add is now that socket connection between the sketch and the server so that if I have another sketch, I can have messages going between the, the, from one client to the server to the other client. So let's see how we get that working. So the first thing I need to do is add the socket.io package to my, uh, whatchamacallit, node package application thingamabob. So if I go back to terminal, I want to say npm install socket.io dash dash save. That's going to install socket.io. Install, install, install. And you should see now here in uh, package.json, we now have added socket.io as a dependency for this particular node application. So now that that's there, and I go back to my server, I can now start doing stuff with sockets. So the first thing I want to do is say uh, socket equals require socket.io. So this is like an import statement. In the same way that I wanted to use express, express equals require express. I now want to say socket, socket equals require socket.io. Now what I want to do though actually is open a, create an actual socket that's part of this server. So the server that's listening on port 3000, that's in the variable server. Now I have access to this socket library, which socket is of course a function. And so I'm going to call this variable IO. It's going to be the thing that's going to keep track of inputs and outputs, messages in and out. And I want to say socket, I'm going to call the socket function and give it the server as an argument. So I've imported the library and the library exists as just like a big function. I call that function with the server that's listening on port 3000 and I've got that in a variable. Now, once I have that, I want to start dealing with certain events. And the main event, the first event that I just want to deal with is if I have a new connection. So I think what I do is I say io.on connection. So sockets work based on different types. You have to write, the idea here is that there's this socket that's a connection. And in the way that everything in JavaScript always works is like there's an event and this code is the stuff that happens when this event is triggered. Uh, events for sockets are like, hey, I'm connected to you. So that's an event. Another event is, hey, here's a message. Another event is, oh, I'm disconnected now. So these are all the events. The first event I want to deal with is just a new connection event. And I want to have a function to handle that event. And of course, I could put an anonymous function just inside right here. But I'm going to try to make things a little simple and explicit. And I'm going to say new connection. And so that means, and th this is wrong. I'm going to go look up in my answer key, io.sockets.on. I knew I was missing something. So I need to, I, uh, this is the syntax for that. I have my, and did I get the other stuff right? <laughs> yes, I did. Okay. Uh, so what I, I need to say io, which is the object now, the whole input output object that's created by that socket function. I want to go inside that object to this thing called sockets, call the function on to set up a connection event. And I'm now going to say function new connection. And what is the thing that is, exists when there's a new connection? A socket. So an argument is placed in that function. And I could say something like, you know, console.log socket. Well, let me run this server now. I am running the server. My socket server is running. OK. The socket server is running. I'm now going to go into the browser. <laughs> Here we go, into the browser. Dun, dun, dun. I'm going to refresh this page. Going to connect with a socket. I don't see anything. So here's the thing. I can set up a socket server all I want to wait for connections, but I've also got to write the code in the client to connect to the, to the server. Like, let's go back and look at my client code. Uh, I don't see anything in here about connecting to a socket. So here's the thing that I need to do. I need to also have a reference to the sockets library in the client. What libraries is, so socket, so let's, let's uh, this is, this is uh, I'm already confused. 
and I, and I, I supposedly know what I'm doing, which I don't really, but you know, whatever. Um, so I can look at socket.io, go to the socket.io website. Come on, internet, don't fail me now. Um, and you can see socket 1.0 is here, and I can go down, and uh, there was something that I was going to look, I can go to download. Ah, so here, right? So there is both a socket.io server and a socket.io client. This is what I need. I need the socket.io server to run here. I've already written the code for that. Now I need socket.io to run on the client. So I need to add that to my client code. And one thing that you'll notice here is a quick way to do that is actually just to copy this line here, which is referencing the socket.io.js library uh, via a CDN, a content delivery network. So I could download the file and put it in my libraries folder, but this is gonna be a little bit simpler. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to go to my index.html file, right? This is where I'm referencing libraries, excuse me, p5, libraries p5.dom, libraries p5.sound. Let me now add another line of code here that just references socket.io. So now I'm referencing that socket library. I can once again hit refresh. <laughs> Let's open up the browser console, nothing there. Nothing there, right? I've got the library, but now I need to write some actual code. Uh, it's so sad when you just like can't remember <laughs> what the code is to write. Good thing I already have the example prepared. So I'm gonna go to my sketch.js. I'm gonna go to the one that I did uh, earlier, and I know that I need, the thing that I need is to create a variable called socket, and then in setup, I wanna say socket equals socket.io.connect, and then what do I want to connect to? Oh, hey. Uh, oops, back after a mistake that I couldn't see, which is now quite obvious to me. For some reason I wrote localhost.com here. There should be no .com. Localhost is the full name of my local computer. I could also write, by the way, uh, the, the 127.0.0.1, which is a special reserved IP address for a local computer, but I'm gonna keep that as localhost. So once I now am connecting in my client, I should be able to hit refresh here and go here and say, oh, all this stuff spit out. Now, so here's the thing, what did I do in the code? Uh, if in the server code, I said right here in a new connection, console.log the socket object. The socket object has a ton of metadata associated with it. Uh, you know, the IP address and all sorts of information about uh, what's been, what's connecting. One thing that I'll do here is just, and we could evaluate, look at all that stuff, but that's a sort of for another day perhaps. I'm going to say socket.id and I'm going to say new connection uh, socket.id. So this is a nice way, uh, every single new connection to a web server, new socket connection to the server gets automatically assigned an ID number for tracking it over time. That might be something you make use of. So I'm gonna put that in here. I'm gonna run, I'm gonna, uh, whoops, I'm gonna run the server again. I'm gonna go back to the browser. I'm gonna hit refresh and we should see new connection. I don't know why I got two new connections. I probably by accident still had it open, but um, then I can go open up another browser window and another browser window and another browser window and you can see all of these connections are coming in. So all of those instances are all connected to the server, all with a socket connection. So we are in good shape now. We have added the socket.io library to both the client and the server. Let's review that for a second. In the server, we need to require socket.io, connect it to this particular web server, and write a function to handle new connections. In the client, we need to make sure we've, oops, sorry, imported socket.io.js in the HTML file, and we also need to make sure that we create, a, open a connection to the server that has the socket server on it. So, that sort of concludes the add sockets to your thing. And the next thing that we need to do, the very last piece, is we want to add code from this client to send a message to the server. We want to add code to the server to receive that message and send it out to all other clients. And that's what I'll do in the next video.